your body gets used to what you are doing. Yes. And as you adjust and as you grow, your body gets used to the new normal. Now you're lifting more weight. Welcome back to All or Nothing in Real Estate. We've got a good one for you today. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Smith here, founder of All or Nothing in Real Estate, um, team leader of newly announced number one team in the state of Missouri Heck and yeah. number eight team in the nation, according to Real Trends. Um, so those rankings just came out. Super proud of my team. Um, but today we've got a good one. We're going to go over the power of one more plus one mentality. And we're going to break that down. Um, as always, I've got Colin with me. Colin, say hi to the audience. Hey, guys. I'm excited about this today. This is going to be a lot of value. Absolutely. So today we're going to share with, I'm going to share with you one, one thing, one mindset that changed how I do real estate and ultimately changed my life. There was a process, a mindset shift that I discovered that once I implemented it, everything in my life, life changed. Mm -hmm. um, I say it all the time. Everything in life starts with mindset. We're going to break that down and tie that into how you can apply that to your real estate career to change your life and your real estate career forever. Mm -hmm. Actionable steps to take the mindset and make it happen in your life. 100%. So as an example, let's go back to like, how did this, how did this mindset shift change my real estate business and my life. So mm -hmm. I remember when I was getting into real estate, like I, I, I don't want to say that I was a failure, but I was in a very, very rough patch. If you, mm -hmm. um, if you guys have uh, followed this movement at all, go back and listen to episode one, where we t break down my story and you'll understand that when I got into real estate, I wasn't in the best place. Mm -hmm. And so really mindset and a lot of the things we're going to go over today of the power of doing one more, the plus one mentality that I adopted really helped me propel my life and get through those hard times to become a quote unquote overnight success. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so the, there's there's a couple parts there I want to break down, Colin. So help help me help me get this out of my brain a little Absolutely. bit. So the, um, there's like when I started into real estate, like the journey to get into real estate, the mentality to keep pushing to mm -hmm. get your license, and then once you get your license, if you're listening, you're a real estate agent. They don't tell you in real estate school you don't get a paycheck on your first day. <laughs> so it was already a tough time. It was hard to get my license, and it was in a very rough patch. And so I just had to keep pushing through mm -hmm. and find something to motivate me to to get out of that hole that I had dug myself in. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I felt like I felt like a failure. Mm -hmm. And so the mindset that we're really going to break down today is that plus one mentality, the mm -hmm. power of doing just one more. And I've applied that to so many different things in my life that you can literally apply that anywhere and it will have a positive impact on your life. It can mm -hmm. be how you're working out. It can be um, if you're prospecting, right? Mm -hmm. Well, just make one more phone call. Right. How many times having that mindset of just one more appointment, one more phone call, one more text message, one more email, mm -hmm. just one more over a long period of time makes a big, big difference. Absolutely. Too many people quit too soon. Like, I'm an analogy guy. Uh, I like memes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that like guy digging gold? Right, you dig in gold, yeah. and that one guy's turning around because, mm -hmm. and he's right there at the edge of the gold. If he would have taken yep. one more shovel full, he would hit the treasure. Mm -hmm. Right, your life is that way. Mm -hmm. You just don't know where those barriers are. So don't stop. Keep going. That's the power of one more. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's amazing how those. Uh, what is it? The, the the saying of the the little hinges that swing big doors. It's those tiny little steps every single day, um, and this is such an important piece of. There's many aspects of mindset. But this one specifically says, all right, what's a small thing that I can do uh, today to move forward in this area or that area? And I think it's you, that's 100% correct. And it's because a lot, mindset's a huge thing. It's mm -hmm. a huge topic. So we're going to break down the power of one more because, like you said, it's just that one little specific thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the actionable stuff that we're going to give you guys today is actionable, like, Anything you're doing in life, it's just it's the tiny hinges. It's those little itty bitty things. And right. I think a lot of people um, are. Well, they look at it like, well, how will this make a difference? It's such a small thing. Mm -hmm. Why would I go one extra, like one extra phone call? What big difference is that going to make? You're like, well, what if that's the phone call that gets you the biggest deal that you've got this year? Yeah. What What is it going to hurt? <laughs> right. But yeah. I know what you, I know. You won't get the result that you want by not doing the work. Yes. Right. And so if you it's the cool part about the power of one more, the plus one mentality is that anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. So if I have a goal, so if I have a goal to make 100 phone calls, if I can make 100, I can make 101. Mm -hmm. I can do one more. Right. And so anybody can do it. And that's what I love about this mindset is that it is it, it's scalable no matter where you are, what you do, and you can scale it up no matter where you are in your life. Mm -hmm. And 
it will breed that positive impact. Right. But just like anything, it's not just that one more one time. Mm -hmm. It's one more consistently over a period of time. Mm Mm-hmm. Well and so make sure you have that mindset. And you broke it down very well, too. It's the, it's the, it's the tiny hinges, right? Mm-hmm. And so why I really, really like this, I'm going to say it again, why I really like this mentality is because anybody can do it. And a lot of people get overwhelmed with mindset. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so much going on. I got to do all of this. This You're already doing something. Right. Just do one more. Mm-hmm. It's simple. Anybody can do it. Well, it's easy to get also overwhelmed when you have uh, big goals if you're a big future-oriented person. Like, let's say that, let's use the, the gym mentality uh, or example for this. Let's say that you want to bench 350 uh, and you're looking at that weight and you're like, man, that is heavy. How on earth am I ever going to be able to uh, lift something that big? Well, if all you can do is five pound reps right now, can you do one more rep today? What about tomorrow? What about the next day after that? Can you add a little bit uh, more weight? Can you add an extra rep? Um, And when you start, if you do that consistently over the next year, you're absolutely going to be able to hit that goal of free. Well, maybe not immediately, but uh, but that that point of that impossible dream of how will I ever be able to do that becomes very possible if you're able to put in the work consistently. Yeah. And I mean, it it goes with fitness, with anything in life. Mm -hmm. Like this is specific to real estate. You want to sell one more house at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, break that down. What are the daily things that you can do one more of to produce that one more house a month or a year? Right. So break that down. And that's the beauty of it is that it's so simple that Mm -hmm. anybody can do it. Absolutely. Matt, you're a huge numbers guy. And so I think this is uh, worth uh, mentioning because when you think, what if I did 1% more? How, how big of a change will that actually make? Um, there's some really neat numbers here that I'd like you to share as, as far as just, it's not just at the end of the year, I'm 365% better at something. Um, but you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I say this all the time and to my coaching clients, to the team, um, it's focus, control the controllables, mm-hmm. right? And so a lot of people, they underestimate what they can do in a day or sorry, I may have had this backwards. Help me out here, Colin. No, no, that's correct. I always get this wrong. Yeah, they, uh, they underestimate what they can do in a day. And, and overestimate, overestimate what they can do in a year. Do, yeah. Right? No, that's no backwards. Way. They <laughs> overestimate what they can do in a day. Yes. We both messed it up. <laughs> so that you can over they overestimate what you can do in a day and underestimate what you can do in a year. Yes. It's because it's the power of one more on a daily basis that compounds over time mm-hmm. that can absolutely change your life. But why, why I say that is because people, how many people do you know that procrastinate? I'm guilty, right? <laughs> we, we all do that. And yeah. so why do we procrastinate? We, we think, oh, we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We overestimate what we can accomplish in one day. Mm-hmm. And then we wonder why we live around overwhelmed and we have all, these, um, all this stuff going on in our brain that adds stress to our life. It's because we put shit off that we should have done today, tomorrow. Yes. Because we overestimate, well, I can do that tomorrow. If you can do it tomorrow, you can freaking do it today. Right. Just have this mentality of I can I need to do this today, and if you do that every single day consistently over time, it will absolutely change your life. Mm-hmm. But you have to keep your commitments to yourself. Mm-hmm. So one percent a day actually makes you thirty-seven times better in a year's time. Thirty-seven times better. Thirty-seven times. So just if you can focus, Colin, on what can I do mm-hmm. to become one percent better in this area of my life today, and you do that for every day for an entire year, one yeah. percent better. Yeah you're going to be 37 times better in that area at the end of the year. Jeez. That, I mean, and to, I guess to put that in perspective, um, uh, let's say that you had the $100 and you add it and you um, work to improve that $100 by 1% every day. Can you showcase the, the compound interest there? Um, yeah. So I don't think I can say that. Ask <laughs> okay. that again. <laughs> so if you had like $100 um, and you improved your financial position by 1% every single day, that $100 so you, so, by 1%. Well, yeah. So you just got 1% interest every day. Right. Like you increase to 1%. Yeah. So that 1% on $100 doesn't sound like much, mm-hmm. right? But over it compounds over time, just mm-hmm. like it does in your life, just like it does. But most people think compounding of interest, right? Compound right. interest is, I mean, how a lot of wealthy people get wealthy, right? But what we don't realize is the power of one more, the power of compound interest in your skill sets, the mm-hmm. compound interest in your mindset can absolutely change your life just like it can change your finances. Mm-hmm. So that $100, 1% better a year, that's $3,778 and some change at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Just 1%. So how can you what what is your one hundred dollars and your skill set that right. you want to turn into almost four thousand dollars at the end of the year? 
All you got to do is focus on getting 1% better every single day. So looking at today and saying, well, what's one thing that I could do to increase, to earn, if you have $100, what's one thing I could do today to earn $1? You go, well, uh, I guess I could do X, Y, Z. And um, then the next day, now that you've made $101, you go, well, what could I do to earn another dollar and a little bit more? Because your accomplishment becomes your new, becomes standard. Your new standard. Yeah. So if you, if you're, so let's, let's put this to real estate perspective. So let's say that you're making, hope you're doing more than this, but let's say you're making 10 phone calls a day mm -hmm. as a real estate agent. That's part of your daily prospecting, right? Yep. Um, you add, you add 1% to that mm -hmm. every single day. You continually now every day is your, that's your new standard the next day. Mm -hmm. And so you just keep adding 1%, 1% because we can always do one more the next day. Yes. We always can. Because, like, let's go back to most the people that will argue with me about this would be like, well, over time, eventually, you're not going to be able to do one more. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the workout an analogy. Mm -hmm. Your body gets used to what you are doing. Yes. And as you adjust and as you grow, your body gets used to the new normal. Now you're lifting more weight. Mm. Now you're used to doing more phone calls. Yeah. Now you're used to having a better skill set. Right. So that 1% is still just 1% because mm -hmm. you have improved that 1% the day before. It's still 1% right. improvement. It's not it's does it's not 37 times more work. It's still just 1%. I like that metaphor a lot. Yeah, you're you're still doing the same number of reps but at a higher weight or more reps the same weight. Right. Either way. It yeah. works either way. 100%. So, why the power of one more, the plus one mentality is so important to me. I know so many people in this world that just do the freaking bare minimum. They just they just just want to skate and get by, mm -hmm. including in this real estate business. And right now, as this market is normalizing, it is so, so crucial that you develop the mindset mm -hmm. and get out of the bare minimum mentality. If you can just adopt this mentality of what can I do to go one do one percent more for my client? What can mm -hmm. I do to go, get one more phone call in? What can I do to get one more appointment? What can I do to get one more Google review? Whatever it is right. that's important in your business, have the plus one mentality of what can I do to do one more? Mm -hmm. Because that will create healthy habits in your business and create positive momentum. And I'm telling you, once momentum is a real thing mm -hmm. and having the plus one mentality will help you develop that momentum that helps you become unstoppable. And it all starts with doing just one more. Mm -hmm. No, because I mean, when you're hitting those standards on a regular basis um, and then all of a sudden one day you don't do anything, that feels horrible. That like that that's the momentum piece. But you jumping off the rails and going, oh, gosh, I don't want to do that. Like once you get moving, it's like keep it going because everything works. Dude, fantastic. that's so good because how many people do you know that start building a little momentum and then they start resting? They kick their feet up on the desk. Yep. And here's here's what's going to happen. Real estate agents, fair warning. Mm -hmm. My prediction, we're going to lose way more real estate agents this year than we have in the last five years combined. Mm -hmm. They're going to get out of the business because when the market normalizes, they're not going to want to do the work. Yep. You know why? Because their feet are, their bellies are full and mm -hmm. their feet are up on the desk because they had the best two years in real estate they've ever had. Yep. It wasn't you. It was the damn market. Mm -hmm. And if your business is a product of the market, you don't have a business. So I'm telling you right now, adopt this mentality so that you can come through this shift, through this normalization of the marketplace in a mm -hmm. better spot. Because there are going to be people that win. Yeah. And every downturn, there are huge winners mm -hmm. and there are huge losers. This mentality will decide which one you are. 1,000%. It's those little things that you do every single day um, that magnify uh, in, in examples like that. Um, so if you're going to not just survive this, uh, this switch, uh, if you're going to thrive in it. Um, 100%. You know. How many people think, well, I just need to get by. Let me mm -hmm. just get by. Get rid of that mentality. Mm -hmm. How can you attack this market? Yeah. How can you attack your marketing plan? How can you attack your action you're taking every day so you can give your clients the service that they deserve? Mm -hmm. How can you attack it to use this, this shift, this correction, this normalization of the real estate market is right. truly what it is. Yeah. So you can use this normalization of the real estate market to your advantage. Mm -hmm. And it's too many people are self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. They start, they quit doing what works because it works. You start building success in your life. You start doing one more. And then once you start feeling some of those results, you get money, you get mm -hmm. you get better fitness, you get better health. Whatever it is that you were doing in your life, you start doing this and getting that momentum, you stop doing it mm -hmm. because you get comfortable. And what happens when you stop going to the gym? You get fat like me. Yeah. <laughs> that is not true. But, but it, yeah, no, obviously, it, um, all the success that you've been pushing off uh, starts to disappear rapidly. 
Um, and that momentum side of things, that's hard to rebuild back up. I mean, you see a, a train that hits a, a penny on the rails uh, and goes crazy. To restart again, you got to one step, one step, one step, one step, go, 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 and then it picks up again. So don't stop that momentum. 100%. Yeah, momentum's a real thing. You got to keep it going. It starts by doing just one more. That's it. Like, we, we overcomplicate it. I said mm-hmm. this before, but it's so crucial. Too many people overcomplicate success. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not super intelligent. All I know is that I am freaking committed. Mm-hmm. And when I say I'm going to do something, I commit to it and I follow through, period. Mm-hmm. That's my secret to success. And it started with the power of one more plus one mentality. What can I do to get 1% better today? Mm-hmm. And if you focus on that, and now you're, the second part to that is now your accomplishment of that 1% better is now your new standard. Right. And then you're continually growing and evolving. That's where true momentum, and that's where you can change your your freaking life in a very short period of time. That commitment is so important, and that's actually one of our uh, topic points here. Um, to be able to develop a plus one mentality, you have to start with commitment. Uh, publicly declaring, uh, if uh, at all possible, all right, this is where I'm headed, um, and I'm going to do everything in my power to move towards that. So today, I'm going to make 11 calls and publicly declare that put write that down on your power list say i'm going to make 11 calls today you're committing to a new standard then when you hit that next day today i'm going to make 12 calls it's it's small but it's also huge at the same time so let's break that down even further so you could be listening and let's talk to the people there that are the the naysayers out Mm -hmm. there in the world well eventually that's going to be a thousand calls a day and i can't make a thousand calls (laughs) the part that you're missing is the skill sets you will develop as you're making that one more call every single day you will get way more productive with less phone calls Mm -hmm. eventually over time you'll be able to do less work and get way more result right and so it's not about just doing more work it's about getting a better result Mm -hmm. and so as you're doing this extra work guess what you're learning along the way yep And if you're intelligent, you'll create leverage by the momentum you're creating Mm -hmm. and help other people make those thousand phone calls. Absolutely. And now you can actually grow a business and scale. Yeah. Yeah. To go, all right, so I need this many phone calls made. So I'm going to spend this next 1% by helping train somebody else, like a new ISA, to continue to uh, increase the the amount of calls that are going out on a regular basis. Yeah. And it's going back to commitment. There's a difference in commitment and goals, Mm -hmm. right? And so- Goals sound huge, cool. a huge difference, honestly. Yeah, I, di- I didn't realize how big of a difference it is to say, Well, my goal is to do this versus my commitment is to do this. So, the goals are worthless, yeah. really. Yeah, how many people actually accomplish their goals? The only people that accomplish their goals are people that are fiercely committed. Mm-hmm. And so, why not make commitments instead of goals? Mm-hmm. And so, when I say I'm going to do something, I follow through, period. Well, we'll define what End goal statement. means it, it's something I intend to do. And it's like versus a commitment, something I will do. Exactly. My intention, uh, yeah, intention's important, whatever. But when it comes to a goal or a commitment, I don't intend to do my goal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fucking achieve it, period. Like, I'm committed to it. Nothing's going to get in my way. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I'm committed to doing this. And so when you really have that mindset and you commit to doing something, the power of one more, the plus one mentality helps you Mm -hmm. fulfill that commitment. Absolutely. Let's talk about the the power of one more that uh, you back to your your agent days. You said that you were struggling with uh, growing your uh, agent side of business, and then started to adapt this new mentality and started uh, challenging yourself to take on a little bit more. What did that look like? Yeah. So I remember when I first started off, like um, way back in the good old days, right? That the the lead. The duty calendar was how you got leads at the office that I was at. And there was a lot of people that looked at duty as, oh, I don't want to do it. And so it started as, honestly, it started as me just being a new guy and I wanted to help out. And so, hey, I'll cover that for you. And then I quickly learned, well, when I covered duty, the phone rang, it came to me. Mm -hmm. And that was somebody that wanted to talk about real estate. Right. So I started asking people, hey, can I cover your duty? Can I cover your duty? Because I wanted those opportunities. Mm-hmm. And so those were 10-hour shifts. I did that for six, six, basically six days a week for a long time. Wow. And so I was so committed to making sure I was there to maximize those opportunities. Yeah. That I did my showings on Sundays or after the, the office closed oh at 6 p.m. So you're like, working like 80-hour weeks. At Easy. least. Jeez. But that was my commitment. Right. Like when I got into real estate... 
like you guys need to go back and listen to episode one and hear my story. Like I was, I was fiercely committed to making something better for me and my family. Mm -hmm. Like I had no choice, zero options mentality. And I've never lost that zero options mentality because if you, if you have a plan B, your plan A is not going to work. You're already thinking in your back mind, oh, well, well, I can always do this. I could switch this up versus an all or nothing mentality. That's right. I'm, I'm going to do it. And so that the power of, well, I, I took one duty day a week. Mm-hmm. Well, what can I? What if I did two? What if mm-hmm. I did three? Mm-hmm. Right. And so what it what it really did is now, I I literally I remember there was a time where I would come home. Um, if I when I came home before my family was in bed, very rarely, <laughs> um, Amanda and I would would talk, and sh- she'd be like, "Hey, how'd your day go?" And I would consider it a failure if I did not set an appointment that day. Wow. Like that was my commitment is yeah. I'm going to set an appointment every single day and I'm not coming home until I set an appointment. Yeah. Like well, go back it to, was, go back it wasn't the, a goal. It was a commitment. And that was what you made. You said, did you fail your commitment? It's like, yeah. yeah. So go back to like caveman days, right? Like that's like, that's a good analogy of I got to bring back, a, I got to go kill something and bring it back to the cave. Ooh. Yeah. Right. That was my mentality of I have to, I have to make this work. Right. I have zero options. And how do you do that? It's by staying committed. Right, because you come home without any food. It's like, hey, how did work go today? You know, in the old yeah. caveman times. Yeah. It's like, oh, I didn't catch anything today. It's like, bummer, I guess we'll be hungry tonight. Yeah. It's like, that's not okay. That's, exactly. That's, you You bring something home or your family starves. And, and there's a quote that about commitment that I say all the time. Um, Done is better than perfect. Mm-hmm. Too many people spend too much time trying to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, come up with a commitment, Put in the work and action. Yes. Action wins. Yep. You you cannot outplan action. You just can't. Because done is better than perfect. Right. My imperfect action will beat your perfect inaction every single time. Going back to the, the same analogy, if you're like, well, I didn't bring home anything today because uh, I was really shooting to, to try to, to get a deer. And your family's like, you know, if you brought home a chicken... That would have been cool. I would have been fine with it because it's something. It's food. It moves you forward. Yeah, keep shooting for the deer, but do something because done is better than perfect. Yeah, and I'm going to say that again. My imperfect action will destroy your perfect inaction every single time. Mm -hmm. So do something. And that goes, let's go back to the power of one more in this real estate like market to to help you guys be successful Mm -hmm. is my coach, John Cheplak. He was just, I was just on a webinar with him yesterday, and he said, we, I'm not in the real estate economy. I'm not in the stock market economy. I'm not in the inflation economy. Mm-hmm. I live in the action economy because I know that no matter what, action wins. <laughs> and so I control the controllables, mm-hmm. and I can control the action that I put in every single day. And so I'm going to win no matter what the account- economy is because I live in the action economy, and I can control that. Mm-hmm. If you just really realize what can I do to put my business in a better spot, that 1% better, mm-hmm. right? That power of 1% better, that plus one mentality that will absolutely transform your life forever because you're in control of it. Yeah. Too many people wait on outside factors. Well, the real estate market is shifting. And so now when the real estate market is normalizing, oh, I'm out of business. Well, why are you out of business? Is every real estate agent out of business? It's like, no, no somebody's you're out of, still there. <laughs> you're out of business because of the choices that you made. Yes. And the action that you did not take. So take the freaking action. Put in the work. 1% better every day. That's how you win. Consistently over time. Whew. A little chills from my last one. Yes, 100%. Uh, let, let's let's hit this next piece on kind of filling the time that you have in the day. Uh, I want to kind of uh, dial down on procrastination because we talked a lot about it a little bit earlier. Uh, it's easy to procrastinate because you're like, well, I can always do this thing later on. But do you notice how um, when you what, what's that saying about the the time allotted um, fills the day or something? It, it has to do with the piece of let's say you have an assignment due at school. And it's due Wednesday night. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, I have till Wednesday to do it, so I don't really need to do it today. It's Monday. I got three more days. So then Tuesday rolls yep. around. You know, you're like, well, no, I, I can still do it. Then you end up doing it Wednesday night, the night that you know, like an hour before it's due. And miraculously, you finish it, and right. it's not half bad. And you're like, huh? Well, I guess I'll do that again next time. And 
you keep procrastinating on a regular basis, what you've done is you've said, well, I can fit this all in last minute. Now, what if you took that same mentality and said, no, I'm going to do five assignments in a single day? Dude, I, I got this. Yeah, go for I, it. I have your answer. The answer is focus. Yeah. When you limit your focus, you expand your potential. Mm -hmm. So let's put this homework analogy into real estate. Yeah. So if you're going on a listing appointment and you have three hours to prepare for your listing appointment, mm -hmm. how long is it going to take you to prepare? It's going to take you three hours. If you have 30 minutes to prepare for that same listing presentation, how long is it going to take you to prepare? 30 minutes. Do you know why? What changed? Huh? Your focus. That's it. How focused are you on what you are doing? Mm -hmm. The most focused individual is going to win. Mm -hmm. Your focus is so, so crucial, especially, so we talk, we're talking about managing your day. Mm -hmm. Your focus, what you're focused on in that task is going to help you manage your time effectively because it's not time management, it's yeah. choice management. Yes. What are my choices? What are the choices that I'm making right now? Because guess what? I believe in accepting responsibility for everything in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't accept responsibility, I can't control it. Right. Can I control time? Absolutely, Absolutely not. No. But I can control my choices of what I do with that time. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about it as choice management, what are the choices that I'm making right now? And is that the most efficient thing that I'm doing with my time? Right. Because we, a lot of times, will push things off and say, oh, we don't, we don't, give ourselves deadlines. So talking mm -hmm. about commitments, yeah. the next part of a commitment is a deadline. Yep. And so a commitment without a deadline is worthless. Yep. Well, I'm going to sell 100 homes by when? Well, you know, In eventually, my eventually, yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to sell 100 this year. Yep. Right? Whatever that number is, whatever that commitment is, a commitment has to have a deadline to be a good commitment. Mm -hmm. And then the third piece to that is you have to be you have to hold yourself accountable to that commitment in within that deadline. Right. Better yet, you you hit on an earlier public declaration is huge. Yeah. What are you going to declare publicly, and who are you going to allow publicly to hold you accountable mm -hmm. to that commitment within that deadline? The minute that you uh, say it, all of a sudden you realize, oh, wait, no, I actually I guess I have to do it. Uh, my friends and I will even um, put money on stuff, not to each other, but we'll actually we'll put it towards um, just a random individual on Venmo or something like that. We'll say, if I don't do this by this time, I will pay $100 to a random stranger. And it's like, well, why would you do that? Well, because I believe I'm going to do it uh, so much so that I'm going to put $100 on it. I'm going to put $500 on it, but I'm going to put 1000 or something like that. If you put that kind of um, the backing behind it saying, no, I'm committed to making this happen, um, then your mindset Dude, has shift. you just reminded me and you owe the agents an apology. You just don't even know it yet. Because you just reminded me of something I used to do that I need to get back to doing. Oh, snap. <laughs> so here's, here's what I used to do is somebody would give a commitment, right? Yeah. And we all fall from time to time, right? Right. But if you consistently were falling short of that commitment, yep. And you so say it was a commitment that was very achievable, and you just let outside influences get in the way, yep. right? And we worked through it, we worked through it, and you just you just weren't committed enough to follow through on it. Yep. What we would do is, all right. So what do you what do you think, Colin? You wanted to make fifty phone calls, and you've only made thirty. Yeah. What got in the way? Go through the whole process, right? And mm -hmm. then, do you want to recommit? Yeah. Okay, so this is the third time we've done this now that you haven't hit that goal. Right. Is, is 50 achievable for you, Colin? Is it's it like, realistic? Yes, I can, I can do that. Yes. Yeah. So you're committed to it, right? Yep. And so then, so what? what's going to happen, Colin? What What should I do if you don't hit that goal? And they usually, so if you, team leaders, if you're listening, yep. they will usually give you a way worse scenario than what you should give them as a team leader because you don't want to take things away from them. Hmm. Most of the time, the agents will say, well, I think you should cut me off leads. Wow. Like if you have the right people. Yeah. But do I, if I cut my agents off of leads, I don't, I'm taking opportunity from them. That's mm -hmm. not what I want to do. No. So they'll give, I let them give the, the bad scenario, right? And they give the bad scenario. And then I'm like, hey, that's, that's one way we could go, but I don't want to take those opportunities from you. What if, what if we, we write a, a hundred dollar check right now? Yep. You leave it blank. I'll hold on to it. If you don't hit that commitment, I'll send it to, another competitive agent, right? Yep. I'll send it to somebody that you don't like. Yes. We'll give it to a charity that's a good cause. Yeah. Something else that really that's not going to take opportunity away mm -hmm. from them, but it really helps them think from a different perspective to help them accomplish their commitment. Right. And follow through on it. Because the, the two motivators are uh, pleasure and pain. And to say, all right, so, um, or is it passion and pain? Um, it, it's something that you're moving towards, and it's something that is behind you keeping, or it's the, the donkey and the carrot analogy. 
You've got the carrot in front of you. Sorry, I've got a million of them. You got they got the carrot in front of you, the thing you're moving towards. Colin had too much coffee this morning. You got the carrot that you're moving towards, and you got the whip behind you that's keeping you moving forward. Never heard of the donkey and the carrot, but I like it, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Um, yeah, so it's it's all about just doing one more, just one mm-hmm. percent better every day, following through on your commitments, and just it's again we over we over analyze things and we overthink what do I need to do to be successful. Mm-hmm. But if you keep if yes you need a you need to analyze things you need to have be smart with what you do right. But we let that get in the way of taking action, mm-hmm. and that's where in that's where unproductiveness comes from is we allow our analytical brains to get in the way of us taking action. Mm-hmm. Because again, my imperfect action is going to beat your perfect inaction every single time. Mm-hmm. Just do something. Don't be a deer in the headlights. Put in the work. Go for it. Take the action. Do one more. 100%. I want to hit uh, or close one loop that we had uh, earlier. You were mentioning uh, the, the piece of focus of if you have three hours um, versus 30 minutes. Um, if you're wanting to achieve the plus one mentality uh, side of things, if you give yourself more deadlines, you'll be surprised at how many more things you can fit into your day. If you're looking at it, you're like, well, there's no way I can do 50 phone calls in a day right now. Um, well, what if you started giving deadlines for each of those phone calls? I, all right, by 12 o'clock, I have to have at least 25 phone calls in. So let me, this dude, this is such a good topic. Yeah, go for it. So let me, so Ed Milet, we have the book behind us where we got a lot of these ideas from one of my mentors, The mm-hmm. Power One More. Pick up his book. It's great. Um, but so he he teaches in this entrepreneurship group I'm a part of with him. He teaches um, many days. So I do it differently than he does. But I have an unfair advantage against the rest of the world. You know why? I have two days every day. Two days every day. Yep. How many? How long is your work day, Colin? Work day is eight hours. Yeah. How long do you think my work day is? Well, if you've got two days, I'm guessing I, I would still say eight hours per day. Nope. No. You know why? why? Because I am fiercely committed. I set commitments with short deadlines, and I am fucking productive. And so I can get done in six hours what most people can't get done in 10. Hmm. And so I have two six-hour days two every six. single day. But that, that is way more time for me to get more than most people can get done in eight hours, and that's hmm. six hours. And so... Ed has three days. <laughs> like, he's way crazier than I am. <laughs> but I have, I have two days every day. Yeah. Like, think of if you, so again, that's the power of deadlines. Yeah. I shrink my days so that I can accomplish more. So it's what are you going to accomplish I today? Get, I get twice as many days as everybody else in the world. I have an unfair advantage. Yeah. Well, because that piece the earlier, it's like, can you make more time? It's like, no, but you can change the choices and those choices will create more time. How many productive people are up by six o'clock in the morning? Most of them. Yeah. How many of them are still working at 6 p.m. at night? Most of them. Mm-hmm. That's two days. That's two days right there. That's two six-hour days yeah. right there. Yeah. So part of my part of my my day is my health, right? right. I'll get up and I'll do a workout. Mm-hmm. Well, that's I choose to do that with my time yep. because that helps me feel better. That mm-hmm. helps me be more productive, right? Yep. And then part of maybe this part of my second part of my day is my family time. Mm-hmm. But I choose to put that in there. But right. I have two days every single day that I get to choose what am I doing with this time. Mm-hmm. And whenever you can actually maximize that time, and it, it'll change your world. 100%. Yeah, so if you're wanting so to hit talk that. talk about the power of one more. Yeah, yeah. I get one more day every day. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And, and that's the, the power of deadline there. It's like if you're wanting to hit this plus mo- one mentality, start putting in those short deadlines and have something behind you that's going to uh, make you uh, commit to it a- 100%. So it's not just something you're kind of sort of going to do. Commit to it. Say, I'm doing 25 phone calls by 12 o'clock or I'm dropping $50 to... Uh, some guy on Instagram I don't care for. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Find somebody that's a demotivator for them. Yep. It, so you can do it depending on who the person is and depending on what it of is. Course. Find a good cause, Yeah. right, and do that first. Mm-hmm. But if that doesn't work, like find a $100 to a great charity, yeah. right? Start there. But yeah. if that doesn't work to motivate them, find somebody that they do not want their name on, the money going sure. to them. And all right, I'm writing it out to them. Yep. You, I'm going to watch you. Write this out to them. Put it in whatever, like give it to me, yeah. and I will I will write their name on this hundred dollar bill, yeah. and I will personally mail it to them if you don't. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I started writing them out to, to charities, and I started to feel like a good person. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. you know what? I just wrote exactly. another hundred dollar check yeah. to a good charity. It's all going to, co- and I was like, this is not accomplishing what I'm. It's meant to do. So yeah, yeah if the first if that doesn't work for you, absolutely yeah. uh, but, switch. So it. 
let me clarify something in case there's people that misinterpret what we just said. I don't force people to give people money that they don't want to do. Absolutely These are not. their commitments and their goals yep. that I'm trying to help them accomplish. Mm-hmm. I'm helping them get out of their own way. Yes. These aren't, hey, you need to do this to be on the team. These are things that they want to do for themselves. Right. And I owe it to them to help them accomplish it. Well, and you gave them the choice earlier, like you said. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, so it's happened three times in a row. We've had a couple opportunities. Now, what do you want me to do? Yep. You, you exactly. put it in their hands. Yep. Do you want Want to lower your commitment, right. or do you want to recommit? Right. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. How how much accountability would you like me to hold you to? Right, and so it's it's one hundred percent their choice. I, yeah. I want to clarify that to make sure that message got across. No, very, um, very something important. else too on managing your day. Um, if you if you are struggling with choice management, time management, we've done one or two episodes on that. One of the great ones is the power list episode. Go back and listen to that. Yeah. There's so much gold there on how you can actually maximize every single day, mm-hmm. and the power list will help you be way more productive in less time. And so go back and listen to that episode. No need to go into it here, but it's a super, super easy tool that anybody can use that will absolutely help you be more productive. 1,000%. Yeah, no, I love the power list. Uh, That'll fill up your whole day and then some. Um, All right, let's... uh, But it'll fill up the day with the stuff that you choose to fill up your day with. Yes. (laughs) You're working on purpose versus on accident. Yes, not just a bunch of random, like, oh, I guess I kind of got to do this. It'll say, all right, you got a million things to do. What's most important? If only these things got done today. You know? And you get a glimpse of that, Colin, on, in your role in our real estate company. But as a real estate agent, 90% of the time, real estate agents act on accident, not on purpose. Mm. Because there's so many outside factors. Mm-hmm. And so if you can control the controllables as a real estate agent, which is what the power list helps you do, I get these five things done no matter what. <laughs> yep. Now, the outside influences, yes, you have to deal with the fires. You have to deal with the things mm-hmm. that happen in real estate but I'm going to take care of my priorities first. Yep. Right. And so if you make that huge, that's a huge, huge difference and a huge mindset shift in real estate. Mm -hmm. Now, so we've been chatting a lot about this whole piece of improving by 1% by 1%, but uh, something we wanted to hit on is uh, it's important to improve by 1% comparing you to yourself, not you to someone else's standard. Um, Because if you're improving if you're saying, I want to be like so-and-so, so today, um, like the, I, I want to run a, an Ironman or something. So today you, you go outside and you run as long as you possibly can and you get half a mile and you collapse. <laughs> like one, go to the gym more, but, but two, it's <laughs> yeah, like, you've got other problems at that point. <laughs> I mean, honestly, but it, you're comparing yourself to someone else at that point. Instead say, all right, comparing me to me, um, could I go, uh, a sixth of a mile, uh, today or, um, what is it? Three fourths of a mile tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, take, take, continue for me. <laughs> Colin, Colin needs help with numbers. Yeah, Math's yeah. hard. Um, no, it so is. <laughs> so what he's saying is, it's very easy. I think what he's trying to say is, you, it's very easy to take some of this and interpret it as I want to compare myself, and a lot of people compare themselves to outside influences, yep. right? We we un. Fortunately and unfortunately, live in a very technology-driven world where Mm -hmm. people put their best lives online. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to fall into the trap of you compare yourself to what their image is they portray online. And unfortunately, not enough people are real online. Mm -hmm. They don't give their real stuff. They give the best version, the cliff notes of... I want to make myself look as good as I possibly can right. online, right? And so now we, as actual human beings, compare ourselves to that person. And mm-hmm. that's just not fair. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's very important as you're going through this, don't compare yourself to somebody else that you don't even know what they went through. You don't know what their life is. You don't know what their true life is. You just see right. them online. Or or even if it's somebody that you work with every day, even mm-hmm. if it's a family member, don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to you. And this plus one mentality is meant for you versus you. Mm -hmm. How can I improve myself 1%? How can I do one more than I could do yesterday? Not how can I do one more than Colin? Mm -hmm. How can I, how can I improve myself? Yes. And I'll need to work on myself and look in the mirror and how can I add that plus one mentality every single day and do just one more than I could do yesterday? Yeah. Because I want to improve for myself. Because that is how you truly build. We talk about confidence. We talk about stress, overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Mental health is a big subject these days. You want to build confidence in yourself? Build commitments. Get 1% better every single day and follow through over a period of time. You will end up loving yourself. You have more confidence and you'll be the best version of yourself. You're building trust in yourself. You're like, I'm going to do this and I did it. Huh. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do this. And then and amazingly, you're not depressed. Yep. You have better mental health. You have better confidence. And your life's in a better spot. Because well, if every day you're saying, I should really do this and I don't, 
I should really do this, or I'm going to do this, but I really know I'm not going to. No wonder that you're you're bummed out uh, on a daily basis because everything that you remotely want to do, you're not doing. That's right. Um, and you know that you're going to fail before you even start. And I think, so the you versus you, there's another flip side to that, and you kind of hit on that, is a lot of people will... I know me and I know a lot of other people that I know, I'm way more way more liable to let myself down than mm -hmm. I am to let Colin down. Mm -hmm. And how many of us actually let ourselves down more than we let other people down? And if you let yourself down enough, then you get into that bad space. So yep. the you versus you, the plus one mentality is to work on yourself. And mm -hmm. what can I do to keep my commitments to myself and how can I improve just 1% every yep. day? Now you mentioned uh, in a meeting last week uh, about having a gym buddy. That it's like, well, uh, I, I don't really need to go to the gym today because you're okay with letting yourself down. Mm -hmm. But if you have a gym partner who's waiting for you there, you're going to get your butt out of bed and go, all right, guess I'll go to the gym because you, you've got, um, you're, you're not just, you're not going to let someone else down. That's right. Someone else that I think is really important to not compare yourself to is future you. So many of us will spend every single day saying, well, comparing me to this future version of myself that doesn't exist yet. Um, I need to be this much better. It's important to move towards that future self, but don't compare yourself to that future version of yourself. Compare you to you today to say, am I better than I was yesterday? All right, move forward. All right, am I better than I was yesterday? Yeah, so I agree and disagree with that. So I agree with what you were saying, but I also think it's very important to think about who is that future self. Oh, yeah. I think it's so important to have that vision for who do you want that future self to be. Mm -hmm. um, I got, speaking of Ed Milet, this I got this from him is his he he says he says it way more eloquently than I can but it's a version of his goal every single day is he he has this vision of this picture and he he believes in Christ and he's going to heaven when he when he goes leaves this world and he says that his his hell to him is when he shows up and that person that he meets at the at the pearly gates is the best version of himself, the version that God made him to be, mm -hmm. the best version that of Ed Milet that could ever been, and he goes to meet that person when he goes into to the to the heaven. Yeah, and that person is complete opposite of who he is. He doesn't Ooh. recognize him. That's hell to him because he could have been better. Yeah, heaven to him is their identical twins. Be like the that. best version of yourself yes. every single day. Who? What am I capable of? What am I capable of as a person? And what can I do today to improve that, to be the best version of myself? Mm -hmm. If you would have asked anybody 10 years ago, 15 years ago that knew me, including myself, mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that half the shit that's in my life would have been possible because mm -hmm. I didn't have the right mindset. But I started building this confidence, and I realized that I could do more. I wanted more. I built that. So that's why I think it's important that you have that vision. Oh, yeah, Without for sure. Without that vision of what I wanted to become, none of this was possible. Mm -hmm. But it's also that vision can also be too far away. Yep. And so you have to you have to back that up with, all right, I need to get better 1% every single day to help mm -hmm. get to that person. Yeah. No, and, and uh, celebrate that. When you get that 1% better at the end of the day, go, you know what? Heck, yeah, I'm one step closer towards that future version of me. Yeah. Love it. So let's talk about um, let's talk about another mentality. Um, I I was fortunate to speak um, on a stage in front of several hundred uh, real estate of the brightest minds in real estate last year, and I talked about this from stage: a victim versus victor mentality. Mm -hmm. And so I I feel my personal opinion is that we have way too much in this world of being the victim. Mm -hmm. Too many people are playing poor me in this world. And so as an example. Like here's just here's a story. Um, I hope I don't butcher. It's been a while since I've told it, but here's a story of there's these two guys, right? And so they're sitting, they're sitting, they were they were interviewed of, hey, why are you at where you're at in life, mm -hmm. right? And one guy's homeless, and they're asking him, hey, how how come how come you're homeless? What happened in your life that led to this situation? And he said, well, my dad was an alcoholic. I was abused as a child. I just didn't have a chance, mm -hmm. right? And so then there's another guy that's a Fortune 500 CEO, super successful, and they say, hey, what do you owe all of your success to? And he said, well, my dad was an alcoholic, I was abused as a child, and so I used that as a motivation to get better. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, these guys were twins. They had the same exact upbringing, but what choices did they make? One decided to be a victim, mm -hmm. and one decided to be a victor. That mentality can absolutely change your life. And I think we have a huge opportunity right now in real estate to choose to be a victor. 
because there are going to be agents that that choose to be a victim yep. and be a product of the market, be a product of the interest rates rising, be a product of the market normalizing or mm -hmm. shifting, and they're going to be out of the business because they have the victim mentality. Mm -hmm. I challenge you. I do this movement. I'm giving back to help you guys be successful. Don't be a victim. Be a victor. Because there are people that are going to win, and they're going to win bigger than they've ever won when this market shifts. Mm -hmm. Which one are you going to be? Are you going to survive? Are you going to get out of the business? Or are you going to use this to thrive? The choice is yours. Because someone's going to do it. Why not you? Yep. Yeah. Now, if, if anyone out there is doubting, I guess, the how important this mindset shift is, I guess, um, to... To throw a little bit of uh, an example of how powerful it is, Matt mentioned at the very beginning of the podcast, we went from uh, number two in Missouri to number one in Missouri, and uh, from number 15 in the nation to number eight in the nation. The fact that we've been continuing to go one more, one more improving over and over and over has uh, everything to do with this approach. Well, yeah. And so I think just real quick to break that down is that we our business has grown significantly year after year after year consistently regardless of the market mm -hmm. because the market doesn't determine our success it only determines our strategy and what does your strategy look like in this changing marketplace what does your action look like in this changing marketplace is your if your if your business is dependent on the market you mm -hmm. don't have a business like i literally I, we did a podcast on this yeah. i think it was the one with ryan yeah and i had one of the agents on the team clip out a recording and send it to me and said, this motivated me. Thank you. And I said something to the effect of, I don't give a shit what it takes. Mm -hmm. We are going to fucking win, period. Mm -hmm. We are going to win. I don't care what it takes because that's the mentality that I have because I know somebody's going to mm -hmm. and I'm willing to do what it takes to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, right? Like I, there's no doubt in my mind anymore because I built that self-confidence in myself because I keep commitments to myself mm -hmm. and I know what I'm capable of. And it's because of the confidence, because of the power of one more, right? And so um, I think it's just, it's so, so crucial too to tie this to, there is, this this is a podcast designed for mindset, real estate success. Yes, all of that. But guys, I'm telling you right now, this, this year, 2022, is going to be a year that determines what the rest of your life looks like if you're in real estate. Hmm. Think about that. There is, yep. there are, there are so many stats out there. There's so many numbers. There's going to be agents that get out of the business, and that's a good thing, mm -hmm. because they're getting out of your way. Yes, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're going to have to grind. Yeah. But with that presents huge opportunity, and it, it comes down to what are you doing every single day? Are you doing the plus one? Mm -hmm. Are your accomplishments now your new standards? Mm -hmm. What are you doing with your choice management? Are you are you being a victim of the market? Are you using it to be a victor? What's mm -hmm. your mentality? All of those things tied together will help you be successful in this market change. Mm -hmm. They will help you come out of... I, I've said this for the last two years of my life. I said it publicly in front of the entire team. This year will be the year that I look back and say, that's the year my life changed forever. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I keep commitments to myself. Yep. And so... Look back in the last two years of my life, there's been a lot of blessings that I've had come to my life and a lot of things that the five-year-old, like me five years ago, didn't think was possible mm -hmm. that we've accomplished because I set those commitments, because of all those things I just talked about. And I'm encouraging you guys. You guys can do the same. I'm nothing special. I am not. I'm just fucking committed. Mm -hmm. And I believe in myself because I keep my commitments. <sighs> Couldn't agree more. Jason. Colin's like, yeah, you're nothing special. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> couldn't agree more. Uh, no, uh, no, that that hits the nail on the head. Uh, Let me add another asterisk to that. Yeah. Also, you have to surround yourself with great people. Yeah. Like none of what I've accomplished is possible without great people. Mm -hmm. So I can't discount that. Like that's that's it. I haven't done this by myself by any means. Right. Um, but I have been helped inspire and bring people along that have the same mindset and vision as me that want to accomplish the same things. And so you have to have the right people around you. 100%. Uh, we, we hit on this a little bit earlier, but the piece with um, oh, uh, picking up steam uh, of, of keeping moving uh, forward on um, the momentum side of things. Um, it's just important as you continue to hit these one more uh, pieces to not stop. Um, don't let 
uh, that penny on the rail completely derailed uh, the the momentum that you've been building at, at that point. Um, because if you keep going when others quit, um, you're it's going to make all the difference. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's when others are quitting, when times get tough, that's opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like that's a good thing <laughs> if you have the right mindset, mm-hmm. right? And if you believe in yourself. Because when other people are quitting, that means your competition is getting less. Now, obviously, don't be the blockbuster. No. Right? No. Don't be the person that's stubborn, stuck in your ways. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But when you're in an industry like we are in real estate right now, this is a huge opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like, um, there's some of my mentors and some people that are in the circles that I run. They did a webinar. They called it the gift of the shift. Like, those are the people that I hang around. Hmm. Because when the market shifts, that's a huge gift for the right people yeah. because of your mentality. And so, again, are you going to be a victim or are you going to use this to propel your career? 100%. Well, if you guys uh, want to hit uh, on uh, surrounding yourself with people who will continue to uh, push you like Matt is talking about that, uh, quick shout out to our uh, Facebook group. You guys are more than welcome. You are uh, encouraged to go uh, uh, join there. It's completely free. We add more uh, value similar to what we're doing here um, just to, to, to pour back in uh, to all of you. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, that's, uh, Matt, uh, that's there... called All or Nothing in Real Estate. It's our private group. We I do live Q&As in there. We do one-on-one. You have one-on-one access to me. Um, it's just another way that we can give back in a more exclusive con- contribution-related environment. Absolutely. I think we've hit all the, the points that we wanted to, to go over. Is there you, any, um, uh, yeah, there's, you talked about a pinata story earlier oh, before yeah. we started, and I interrupted you. So wait a minute. Save it for the show. So let's hear it. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I guess in the piece of surrounding yourself by uh, individuals uh, who – help to upgrade your life. If you don't have anyone immediately around you and you've already joined the group, uh, grab a book, someone who uh, is a a thought leader um, in these examples. In our case, it's Ed Millett on this piece of The Power of One More. It is a fantastic book. And he uses this uh, analogy for the the power of one more. And he uses, um, there's a bunch of kids and it's a a birthday and there's a pinata that's up there. And he blindfolds, uh, or they blindfold one of the kids and he goes out there and he takes a swing. And then another kid goes out there and takes a swing. And one of them, some of them miss, some of them hit it. But uh, a lot of the kids start to get tired because it's like they're hitting the pinata and nothing's happening. It's like, how come the candy hasn't fallen out? Like, okay, this is getting exhausting. But um, there's one kid, it's the, um, the main uh, birthday kid, he's, he's noticing a difference and he keeps going back up there and, and giving it another swing and giving it another swing. What happens if you hit a pinata enough times? It breaks. It breaks, exactly. And out comes the candy and then th- there's the reward. So this piece of one more, it can be really easy to get discouraged when you're in the midst of it. You're like, I'm giving it one more, I'm giving one more phone call, one more phone call, and I'm just getting no, 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 boom out comes the candy. That's right. And you're like, oh, wow. Okay, so it was this close. I was this close to it, but I gave up on that swing. Right. You know, I mean, you're literally, like the blindfold analogy is perfect. You can't see how close you are even to the pinata breaking, but keep at it. Keep hitting it over and over. And Dude, that's a great now. I've not heard that before. That's why I wanted you to say it. Yeah, show, yeah. That's great. So that's, um, there's so much to that because we, we get in our own way and we live in a society of instant gratification, mm-hmm. right? And so everybody wants results right now. Boom, there it is. It's yeah, like, you want to nope. hit the pinata one time and it break open. Yeah. That's not how it always happens, mm-hmm. right? You have to hit it over and over and over again. Yep. And so delayed gratification is going to be needed, especially in this real estate market and in life, right? Yep. You, it doesn't happen overnight. Like I work on a 90-day cycle. What mm-hmm. I do today affects my life 90 days from now, yep. whether it's my fitness, my health, my business, no matter what. And to be honest, you may even, I've done a talk with my team on this you may even have to extend that even further when the market is normalizing and correcting and changing mm-hmm. right and shifting so um but make sure that you realize that you're just you could just be one hit away you yes just don't know don't give up too soon because you are way closer than you think and i promise you that one more hit is going to get you closer to breaking that pinata mm-hmm. whatever your pinata is whether it's one more appointment one more uh contract what one more closing whatever that pinata is for you yep just swing the bat mm-hmm. one more time that's it that's all it takes like that a lot <laughs> all right that's i think that's it good awesome yeah i think so i think this is a good episode um so colin thank you so much for being here yeah. guys like colin mentioned we have a uh, all or nothing in real estate is a movement it's a way to give back i hope you guys got some value from this episode if you did please share it with a friend mm-hmm. this truly is a free movement to give back 
to help others. I know there's advice in here that's absolutely transformed my life, transformed my real estate business, and I know it can yours and other people that you know. So share it with them, give back, join our private Facebook group, follow us, um, and let us know what else we can do to help you because we're here to help. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. If you found anything this valuable, please share this with your friends. All or Nothing in Real Estate is a passion project of mine. This business has done so much for me and my family, and this is my way to give back. I'm also a real estate coach with Chet Black Select Coaching. So if you are interested in having a coaching consultation with me, please check out the link below. All or Nothing in Real Estate is not just a podcast. It is a movement. It is a community of contribution that is single-handedly designed to help change the real estate community in a positive way. So make sure you're following us on all social, social platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. Most importantly, make sure you've requested to join All or Nothing in Real Estate's private Facebook group. That is a private group that we keep in exclusive content and we do it in a private setting to make sure it remains a community of contribution. There's a lot of great in-depth content there for free. So please make sure you join that group as well. And again, Thank you guys so much for listening. If you found this of value, please share this with your friends. It is my goal to give back and contribute to make this industry better for all of us. Thanks again.